Hello and welcome back to these tutorials. Now this is a hugely sentimental picture for me. A pair of old boots. Yes, I know. What happened was I was coming back from a walk with my son and he was sitting on my lap while we were taking off our shoes and I was going to put his shoes somewhere else but he said, no daddy, leave them with your shoes and they could be friends and he toddled off. So of course at that point I turned around and went, oh my little boy, I love him so much and blah 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 and made a complete fool out of myself. Never mind, it's, it's good to be a modern dad, what can I say? Okay, we're using a black and white picture here to make things easier because we're going to be talking about curves. So what are curves? Well, I'll show you. So as before, we come to our background layer, click on the little cog in the layers palette, duplicate layer. So this new layer, that's what we're going to be working on. Then we come down to our effects browser, make sure you're in color adjustments, and there's curves. There we go. And that line there, that's your curve I'll show you. See, look at that. You can put different points on this line and make it into a curve. Wow, that's great. Well, so what? What, have you, what did you actually do there? All right, well, I'll show you that as well. I'll click on reset, take it slowly. Right, take a look at this graph here. That shows you all the dark and light grays. Going from this end, this is black. As you go along, there's no very, very dark grays. But when you get to about this point, you start to see just a little bit dark grays there. As you go along, you can see, well, there's a bit of a spike here of some medium dark greys. Now, I'm guessing that's going to be this dark grey of these shoes. Then when you go along, there's not much mid grey in there, a bit of a dip there. But then when you get to this point, this kind of mid to light grey, see, you get a huge spike there. That is probably this floor surface. You see, it's covered in mid light greys. That will be that point of your graph. So what this graph is showing you is how much of a particular shade you've got there. Now, bear in mind again, this is dark, this is black, and this bit up here is white. Now, Pixelmator looks at this line and says to itself, all right, well, at the moment, all the 25% greys are at 25% brightness. Great. All the 50% greys are at 50% brightness, and all the 75% greys are at 75% brightness. Great, everything's cool. I'm going to go and look at the internet. Okay, bye bye, Pixelmator. Now I'm going to left click at the middle point of this graph. I'm going to try and get it so I am on 50% 50%. I'm going to take this 50% gray and I'm going to push it up now. So now my 50% gray is at 66%. Now Pixelmator comes along and says, right, OK, they're 25% grey. Oh, it's brighter. So I'll make everything brighter. 50% grey is at 66% brightness. OK, make everything brighter there. And 75% grey, let's take a look. Yeah, that's a bit brighter as well. So it'll go along at every percentage point along this graph and make all the necessary adjustments. And in this case, we've made everything brighter. Now, if I want to get rid of that point, just click it, drag it off to the side, bang, it's gone. But I can do more with this. I can click on the 75% grey, make that bit brighter. And I can click where it's 25% grey and make that bit darker. And hey presto, you're getting much more contrast in there. Because the darks are much darker, the lights are much lighter. Now, it was a little bit like using levels, but with levels you've got... A dark point, a light point, a one point in between. Now, at the moment, we've got two points. We can put as many points in there as we want. I can put another point in the middle to control the overall brightness. If I want to make the lights a little bit lighter, I can do this. I can also bring this in a little bit. So now, this is approximating what we were doing with the levels palette, but I've got that much more control over the whole thing. At the moment, I'm not trying to go for any particularly decent image here. I'm just showing you how it works. I'm going to move these back for a second here. I'm going to click on reset. Look at what I did before. You see this S shape here? This is the classic curve that you do get if you want to increase contrast. I'm going to show you something here. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. If I take this line and make it very shallow, can you see the image? It's very, very grayed out. 
That's one rule. Whenever this line is shallow, you're getting much less contrast between the individual tones. But if I make this line a lot steeper, like this, the steeper that line is, the more contrast you're going to get. So, I'll also show you. Okay, we've got our contrast here. I increase contrast, that's nice. And I can also adjust the, the overall middle level here as much as I want. I can also target certain areas like that dark of the shoes, the grown up shoes. I can make that, those a little bit brighter without affecting the light areas too much. But I'm going to show you something here. This is a gotcha with this. If I start to make this part of the graph very shallow, look at these parts here. We're getting all these dead gray areas. That's because I've compressed the grays in between that point and that point. I've compressed them and made this line way too shallow and we're getting this awful kind of grayed out image. Even worse is when you get this negative slope here, you get all kinds of curious things going on there. So I'll just reset that. All right. I think we've done enough of black and white here. For now, let's just say we're going to go with that. Click on OK. Compare that with our original. Grayed out, much better contrast. OK, now let's take a look at using curves with color. Right now, this picture's got a number of problems with it. Overall, it's too bright. All that green grass, it's too bright as well. It's looking like AstroTurf there. I need that to look more natural. It's also reflecting off the skin of this boy as well. His skin's looking too green. His coat is looking too dull, the blue. I need to do something about that. There's a lot of problems here. Let's see if we can do it all in one go, because in the past, we would first of all go to levels, control the brightness, then go to the color balance afterwards, and maybe look at the hue and saturation. Let's try to do it all in one go. Set ourselves a little challenge, and first of all, duplicate the layer. That's the one we're going to be working on. And come to Curves. Drag it over so that we can see what we're doing. All right, well, first of all, we need to control the overall brightness of this. So this is all our red, green, and blue components here. Click on the middle and drag it down. Now, that's working generally quite well, but that coat is starting to look darker than I want it to be. Now, these colors here, see there's a lot of dark colors. It's probably around here somewhere. So I'm going to click another point here and try and drag that up. Can you see what's happening when I'm doing that? The overall brightness has got darker, but not in the shadow areas because I can control it using the curves. Look at that. I can control it as much as I want. That's way too much, obviously, but I want to do about there. Right. Now, the biggest problem I've got in this picture is with the green. So let's come up to the green component. Now, this is all the green values in the graph. Let's see if we can pull this down a little bit so the whole thing is just a little bit less bright green. That seems to be working. Let's try pulling down the top end as well because there's a lot in the top end. OK, that's working better. Now, that blue coat, I wanted that blue coat to be a little bit more vivid. There's hardly any blue in the lighter areas. Let's take always take a middle point, see what we can do with that. Well, no, that's going to make things look a bit cold there, but I do want the blues in the shadow areas to come up, so the coat, look at that, just a tiny little bit, and remember small amounts with this, and already it's looking much better, that blue, much more vivid. Let's take a look at the red. What do I want to do with the red? Yeah, skin tone's getting warmer there. Although you can see the darker areas around here, the coat's starting to get purple. I need that to be come down. So click it in the darker area, pull that down. And can I get anything in the lighter parts? A little bit more red than the upper parts. I don't want the hair to become too strawberry blonde, so I'm going to pull that down a little bit, but I want a little bit of a, a boost in the middle around where his skin tones are. I'm going to click on OK with that. Now, let's make it invisible and compare it with our original image. Oh, look at that. That was the original, and it's only when you look at the original and then look at the image you've just created, or the image you've just adjusted, 
and you can see what a difference it's made. Now, in the past, we would have done that using levels, color balance, maybe the saturation. That's the point of curves. You can do it all in one go. It's a very powerful tool. It's quite easy to get wrong. The mistakes that people make is they make too large adjustments and also they don't really understand what it is they're doing. But now you've seen how it works. Give it a try. You may find it speeds up your color correction or your color adjustments by quite an amount. If they work for you, great. If not, just stick with levels, color balance, hue saturation, whatever makes your pictures look better for you, then it's all good. I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, maybe you consider clicking on one of the links below and check out my game called Disco Baby, which is on the iTunes store or Android stores like Google Play. It has three different games in it, a memory game, a maths game for children, and a dance along with me game for toddlers to join in with. Thanks for your time.